Welcome to the latest in our series of UK Cigar Scene interviews. And for this month's interview, we've come to the compact but perfectly formed sampling lounge at Termius in, uh, in Shepherd's Market in Mayfair. And our interviewee this month is uh, a real proper Hollywood movie mogul, Hollywood producer, Alan Greenspan. Alan, welcome. Thank you, Nick, and thank you for inviting me. Not at all. Alan, uh, Alan's name appears on the credits uh, as a, a producer and uh, or executive producer for films uh, that you will have seen like Fever Pitch, uh, High Fidelity and uh, Donny Brasco and he splits his time between the US and London where he's now based uh, and we're delighted to, to have you here and above all Alan likes a cigar as I know I've enjoyed a cigar with you so what what uh, what started you into to cigar smoking when when was that? Um, when I was young, uh, I remember the first cigar I had was probably 12, 13 years old. And I was never into cigarettes, um, but I always liked the taste of cigar. And I think that I really became and embraced cigars um, somewhere freshman year in university. Um, I had a nasty habit of chewing tobacco. Okay. And, and, and I got into chewing tobacco through playing sport. And it was, I, I needed to wean myself off of the chewing tobacco because I don't know if, you, if you've seen or if any of your readers or viewers have seen it, but you basically put you know, a bit of tobacco in, in between your lip and your, and, your, and your teeth and you just suck out the juice and you spit and it's just disgusting. So right. <laughs> I started to, to smoke, um, didn't like cigarettes, so I started smoking cigars, the cheap ones, moving my way up from like a um uh jamaican royal to you know a little bit more sophisticated and over time was introduced and living in america it was difficult to be introduced to cubans but when i started to travel and, and spend more time in the uk and in europe started to get um educated about cuban cigars excellent and and i know as a as a, as a in life you must have a really busy working life what does what do cigars bring to you what what a <sighs> I, I approach cigars more on a philosophical basis. Um, yeah. I love that it gives me, however long the cigar is, depending on the ring gauge or the length of it, that's going to allow me that much time to put the world aside and just have my own thoughts. And so I like not only the taste and, and, and the, relax, the relaxation it brings, but also the ritual that comes with it. Because we all know that it takes five to ten minutes to prepare the cigar. And if you're on your own versus if you're with you know friends or colleagues, you're going to talk about it, you're going to feel it, you're going to fondle it, you're going to cut it. You're, so anyway, that's what it brings to me. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and in 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 Hollywood, in life in Hollywood, I mean, we're, we're lots of uh, lots of old pictures and uh, films of Hollywood movie moguls with with huge cigars on. Is it is it still like that? Is is Hollywood still like that? I think behind closed doors, probably so. I think that, you know, just like around the rest of the world, it's becoming harder and harder to smoke. In, um, in Hollywood, in Los Angeles, in Beverly Hills, in Santa Monica, where most, um, most people who inhabit the, the, the moving film industry live, you can't smoke in the streets, you know, so you have to go to smoking clubs to, to have that. You can't even smoke in a patio. So I think more and more that's kind of going by the, the wayside. But there's still, I know, I know there's still a lot that enjoy cigars. And you can't smoke on the streets. I didn't understand that. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, no public spaces. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's that's. A lot of people are, are 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 vaping though. Okay, and that's okay. <laughs> that's a, well for, for now. The moment. <laughs> for the moment. <laughs> right. Right. Wow. So we see the words producer and executive producer yeah. flash by on the <clears throat> on the credits of a film but i don't i i, I don't, don't even begin to sure. understand so tell tell us what what that actually involves what what do you do as creating a film well in in what what i do is i'm very hands on through the, throughout the creative process so what i will do is and sometimes I'll work with with writers or with the director or other creatives in coming up with the story and either sometimes I'll read an original script that's been submitted to me or something in the newspaper and you want to go after the life rights or books that have been submitted and how can you adapt that into into films 
in the past, um, I've done a number of, of, of films that have been adapted by books. Um, so it all depends on the creative inspiration and the source that you get it from. And yes, you're right. When you see a film, you'll see a lot of um, credits with producers and executive producers. And what happens is with the budgets becoming bigger and bigger with film, there's more people involved. And the more people involved, you know, either they have their own company, they're part of a company, they're part of a media conglomerate. So you start to bring on more and more to help put the film together. And so usually there'll be two, three, maybe four producers. You'll see a lot more executive producers. Usually executive producers are those on the business side or involved creatively in a peripheral fashion or maybe have been involved with the film um, at one period of time and, and had to let it go but still have a credit and they've been moved from a producer to an executive producer to accommodate those who are producing. Right. And now that a few years ago, the, um, the Academy of uh, Arts and Science, which controls the Oscars, um, limited f only four producers were allowed to be nominated. Okay. So it really, you know, creates a scrum. You know, who's going to get that? <laughs> who's going to get one of the four? You know, it's like a bidding war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gets their name so, on there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I suppose you can't have more than four people up on stage for the for the award ceremonies. Like I, that, or or maybe they just want to get through the, all the, the acceptance speeches, you know, right. and and, yeah. and make the two hours <laughs> in, the, in the broadcast. But but I I do want to say television is a little bit different. In television in film, whoever you see as a producing credit are usually the ones that are responsible for getting the film set up, developed, financed, made, and not only you know to to into production, but post-production and, 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 and marketing and distribution. In television, it's really, um, if you see an executive producer credit, those are the ones who are really driving it creatively. Right, right. And so you may well find a story or find a book. What's, from, from the time you find that, the, the time you actually, uh, you, 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 something actually fires you up and you want to go make a film out of it, from that, that point to the point at which we're, we're going to be sitting down in the cinema and watching it. How long does that take? What's the gestation period? Uh, it, it's a perfect definition of eternity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Usually about four to six years, I would say. Wow. From the time that wow. you find the material to being able to um, get the, the resources and the financing to develop it, to get the actors and the director attached, um, to get a backer, be it an American studio or a third-party financer, to put the financing together going through production, then um, either the sales of the film or the distribution of the film, it, it, it can take that long. Wow. And so would you have one, two, three films on the go at one time or...? or? Sometimes you can, yeah, I, I, you have to. And right. And sometimes, um, <clears throat> at this point we're currently, we have about 16, 17 projects that we're developing. Right. Some film, some television, okay. and they all kind of jockey for different positions. Some start to, you know, gain momentum, and you have to start, you know, riding that one. Right. And until you can no longer, or until it goes into production, but you know, you're constantly having to um, juggle multiple projects. Right. <laughs> that must be. That must be. Uh, yeah, that must be a challenge. I can imagine keeping keeping all those uh, all those balls in the air yeah, at the yeah. same time. Yeah. And also, depending on the projects, you know, you have partners, um, you have financiers. Needless to say, you may have some egos that, 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 that come on board, um, and all that has to be managed in the diplomacy of putting a film together. Right, right. I can imagine diplomacy is, a, is one of the key skills. And so, no, that's, that's a good, po good, good point, actually. So how did you get started? Is there like an apprenticeship for, uh, for producers? Do you, do you, is there a... Is there a, a college course or a university course? Well, or there, how do you start? There, there are courses, but not not necessarily for producers. Um, you know, there are film schools that you can go to. There are you know uh, schools that you can learn how to produce and what it means to produce and how to put a film together and how to raise financing. The best is just doing it, and there's no one clear path. I mean, you know, you could talk to you know a hundred producers and each one's going to have a different way how they went into it. Right. Um, my path was I started uh, in one of the big talent agencies in Los Angeles as a uh, representative of writers and directors in film and television. And over a period of time, I represented them, I put their films together, I worked with them you know, in, in, in finding material, sourcing material, helping them develop material, trying to get the financing forward. And basically, I was acting like a producer anyway, uh, within the confines of a, of a big agency. Right. 
And I think you do anything long enough and you want new challenges. So for me, I love the creative side of, of developing material and producing material. And it was an easy segue for me to move from being an agent and working and, and representing the writers and directors to actually moving along with them and, and becoming their partners and putting films together with them and working with them um, in a different capacity. Right. But, you know, there's other, other producers who come through the studio system who are studio executives and have moved over into producing. Um, so we all bring different skill sets to what we do um, and we have a different approach to it. And, but you know, but at you know, but the, the the key is to have one, the experience and know how to 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 put a film together and how to develop a film with the talent, I mean you know the the the, the creatives, but also um, the relationships and the relationships are important. Got it. And cigars in films mm. these days. No, we I can think of. A number of films where you know there's the, so the star we smoking cigars. Is, is a character still allowed to do that these days? Not as easily, but it's still done, and right. it, it still can happen. A lot of it has to do with if it if it really serves the character well, and also the period. So any time before, if it's a, you know period, meaning you know in the 50s, 60s, 70s, even before they started the smoking bans, before, you know, it was um, taboo to, to, to smoke, you can get away with it. Right. But you have to make a, you know, you have to make a, a, a hard case for it. I mean, you know, on the television show Mad Men, everyone smoked, but that was the period. Right, you know, right. That, that was the, the 60s. Everybody did. Right? Everyone yeah. did, you know, so, you know, to keep the authentic, authenticity of, of that period, you can get away with it, but you have to make a strong case for it. Right, right. And in your films? <laughs> Harder in the studio films, easier in the independent films because you have okay. nobody looking over your shoulder you right. know, and saying, no, you can't do that. But um, I do like to um, try to get at least one character in, 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 in the piece to smoke cigars because we can write then the cigars into the budget. <laughs> so. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Well, that works. That works. Within within reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I understand. I understand. Yeah, you don't want the whole crew smoking yeah, smoking cigars off off the budget. Well, also they're not going to be you know pre-revolution either. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. That's right. That's right. So you're you're based largely in the UK now, um, and you've got free access to access to to Cuban cigars. Is that is that something that uh, you're enjoying? I I I'm, um yes, I am very much. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not enjoying the tobacco tax, but I do enjoy the, no, the, the access to the Cuban cigars. That's right. Unfortunately, that's something we all have to, yes, we all have yes, to yes. bear with, uh, I'm afraid. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. And, but I, having said that, I think tobacco, there's an outside chance that tobacco duty is going to increase in the States. I mean, I read recently it's that the large duty heard, yeah, increase I've, is coming. Yeah, yeah. I've read so, that as well. So. Um, and... Cuba. Have you visited Cuba yourself? No, and it's on. It's one of the destinations high on my list, and it's a funny one because I, I moved to London. I'm now a British citizen. I got my British passport. Okay. And so I want to go um, once I have a free moment to be able to, to 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 get to Cuba. But also now the U.S. it's opening up, and so I don't know which passport I'm going to use: the American or the or the British. All right. But for, right. the, but for the time being, it'll be I'll go into the British one. I think, and I think the the answer is I've been I've probably been saying this to, to to people for about the last three or four years, but the answer is go quickly. Yes, I think. yes, I, I, I want to find that window of opportunity. You want to go soon? I saw a note um, from uh, actually from uh, name check David Savona from uh, Cigar Aficionado. He posted on Twitter, "Hey, isn't it great? They're going to be hundred plus flights." Um, a week. I'm sorry, 100 flights a day. A day. Flights. I think like 119. From the US yes. to Cuba. And I sent him, yes. a, he put this on Twitter, and I sent him a note back saying, that's great news, David. Where are we all going to sleep? <laughs> you know, that the, there will be no hotel rooms. The, the, there's, uh, you know, yeah, you, you no, get off the plane and they'll give you a sleeping bag. Oh, but say, I'm sure I'm going to sleep on the beach. Well, I think that's where it's going to change because, you know, you're going to get all the... Um, uh, hospitality and, 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 you know, companies coming in and... Yeah. Building hotels and yeah, it, it's, it's just just that there's a slight there's a, yeah like film to film. It, 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 it's like if, there, if we were having this conversation, you know, before the wall came down in Berlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's right. It's going to change. That's right. So, do do you think Cuba is uh, going to become a target for for film filmmakers? It already is for, as a location. 
Yeah, it already is. I, I, I read somewhere that I think they're bringing Fast and the Furious, whatever number it is, into the next location is going to be Cuba. Right. So I think right. you're going to see more and more. Actually, we've been um, developing a project, a television project, that takes place in Cuba, pre-revolution. Right. And um, I, 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 I did that just because it's a fascinating story, but also I think, you know, right now the locations would be so interesting and raw and something that a lot of the West, particularly in the, in the U.S., haven't seen. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think, I think it's a think great right. location. Yeah, I think you're right. It's, it's uh, and and I think it's, and it's great, and I hope it, it helps the helps the uh, the economy too. Uh, what's your what's your favorite cigar film? Do you have a do you have a favorite film? With I got, there's a few. Um, you know, I I love Wolverine. Okay. I, yeah. I, I love the fact that you know. I mean, it, it, it's so out of that character is, you know, to, to be smoking, but also, um, uh, I'm, I'm a fan of Hugh Jackman's and, and, and I, a friend and, uh, and, um, it's just great to see that character because it's so right. out of character for him to, and he's a cigar smoker in real life. I take it. I'm not sure. I don't really, yeah. In that case, he's a very good actor because yeah, yeah. he smokes a cigar. Because he does enjoy it when, when <laughs> yeah, he's a right. and, and, but also Scarface and the other one, which I, I, I enjoyed was Hellboy. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 You know, he's definitely a cigar smoker. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. We, have you seen the film Soy Cuba, the, the, the Russian film that was made in Havana just after the revolution? I, I haven't. I know of it. Um, I've seen bits of it. I'd like to see it in its entirety. Right. Um, but I'd come across an interesting interview with Martin Scorsese, who had you know, released it in the U.S. years ago, uh -huh. and just you know, hearing his take on it, but hearing it from a director, filmmaker, cinematographer's perspective as opposed to just the storytelling right right well there you are well i've got a copy somewhere but mine's still in in its wrapper so we'll have to organize yeah, an evening and we'll all get that. together and, uh, and sit and watch that and so your your american or your hollywood colleagues how much are they looking forward to being able to get on uh, get hold of i'll, I'll say le <laughs> legal cuban cigars the supply of legal cuban cigars i i I think they're looking forward to it. I think they're looking forward to not having to worry if, you know, an illegal shipment's coming through, you know, Switzerland or however they, you know, they, they get it. Or, yeah. um, so I think it would just make it so much easier. And why not? I mean, it's, you know, we're 16 years into the 21st century and, you know, these antiquated, you know, treaties or embargoes, you know, yeah. still going on. It'd be great to be able to be civilized and sit down in the U.S. and have a cigar, yeah. Cuban cigar. That's right. No, I think it's a... Uh it's about time, yeah, even though so. even though here in in, uh, in the UK a lot of us worry about what it's going to do to our cigars and where all our cigars are going to disappear too. Well, you think but, about that, uh, you know, and, and and how it's going to affect the manufacturing of cigars in, in in Cuba. Yeah, you know, hopefully the quality continues to stay yeah. strong. I, I was talking to someone yesterday. I think there's no doubt that the capacity is there, the land is there, and that they've got the the, the uh, they've got people who can be trained to make cigars. It's just again. It's going to have a lead time. Yeah, it's yeah. Gonna, you know, they've got to grow the tobacco and then they've got to train the rollers. It's not something they're going to be able to switch on in a hurry. Well, that's that's been really interesting, uh, and I've, I've I've enjoyed that that short snippet, that short insight into into Hollywood. Let, let's finish with our our final three questions, uh, standard questions. We finish with, what do you like to to drink with a cigar? What's your your favourite? Depends on the time of the day. Okay. Um, in the mornings, I like a cappuccino or a, a double espresso, um, which is usually on the weekends. Um, and in the evenings, depending, depending on the cigar, but anything from a, a, a good whiskey to a cognac to a red wine. Right. Excellent. Good to have a number of things to choose from. <laughs> Options are always good. <laughs> That's it. And um, what's your favorite? Where do you like to smoke a cigar? Where's the favorite, favorite, favorite place to enjoy a cigar? There's two possibly three places and and one is more of a state as a state of mind as opposed to um a location but the two favorite in the winters i like the bar at the savoy hotel in berlin and they have a nice humidor that's that's supplied by casa de habana and it's just a comfortable um kind of art deco environment which i enjoy very much and the other is in the summer i have a friend uh he and his family have um hotels throughout the amalfi coast and a few up in Ravello. And I like sitting on the on the terrace overlooking the Mediterranean with a nice cigar and yeah. and anything that, that yeah anything <laughs> from a, a cappuccino to local you know red wine yeah yeah or, or an aperol spritz Brilliant. and then and the other is um, and it's more state of mind but 
when we're in production, I like having a morning cigar. Uh, when I get to the set before, as the crew's setting up before the actors come, and usually first thing in the morning, the sun's just about to come up and go outside somewhere and have a cigar and just contemplate what the day's going to be like. Right. So it's so, so setting the setting yeah. the day up cigar. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, the uh, first thing that a cigar first. A lot of people find it a bit strange that you smoke a cigar first thing in the morning, but yeah, if it's if, if everything is right, everything the, is yeah, then it, it, it's a it's a fantastic time. That's why I think you know the the the, the weekend mornings. You know, it's just mm. the perfect time because there's no one around and you can stay. You know, you, you can just get into that 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 space, that zone, and just no one's around to bother you. Yeah, or to interfere yeah. with your thoughts. Just set the weekend. Up. Yeah, 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 wonderful. And finally, your most memorable cigar the one that you you that, that stands out that you can uh, you can think of um it was a it, it it was a cigar it was a box of cigars um that was presented to me by a friend of mine who lives in spain but originally from cuba and goes back to cuba um four or five times a year and <clears throat> curiously enough he just bought a farm some property in in, in, in Cuba, where he wants to start to grow or, organic vegetables again, you know, ahead of the curve for you know when, when uh, the embargo in the U.S. is lifted, and he has a neighbor who grows his own tobacco, and it was a the tobacco from his neighbor's farm that was all hand rolled, 25 cigars, robustos with a band of my name on it, wow. as given as a gift, and um, that was my most memorable cigar and box of cigars. And there's, I'd like to say there was a certain, you know, year pre-revolution, um, uh, regional, but it was just, you know, the thought of it and also that it was, a, you know, a one-off. Yeah. 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 And yes, yes, single, single farm yeah. <laughs> cigar. How fantastic is that? That's a very good connection to have. I think, uh, yeah. And, and again, somewhere to go and somewhere to go and meet in, uh, in, 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 in Cuba. And, 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 and he and his family from Cuba, so um, I'm looking forward to exploring Cuba through a local and somebody from his perspective who was there and, and left probably 20 years ago and he's going to go back and, and eventually move back. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, well. Uh, yes. He'll have a. He'll have a great. Uh, he's got a great project there. Yeah, well, yeah. As the country has too. Alan, that's been really excellent. Thank you so much um, for being with us, and thank you for a great Nick, interview. Nick, thank you. Well, thank you, and thank you for your time, and thank you for asking me to to be interviewed for your magazine. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.